I was going to be a motivational speaker. Love to motivate people. I was going to be the next Tony Robbins. I even went to the Tony Robbins Firewalk Experience, where I actually walked across 30 feet of burning coals. And I realized something. I don't want to be able to walk across 30 feet of burning coals. <laughs> what I want is I want to be strong enough. I want my faith to be strong enough. I want my will to be strong enough to be able to get out of my boat and walk on water. Yeah. Motivation is a word that comes from providing incentive to take action. So if your New Year's resolution is based on motivation, chances are it will not work. Because life happens and before you know it, something will just come out of nowhere and BAM! Things change and your incentive for doing that goes away. That's why my talk today is about the death of motivation. Because motivation in and of itself is not enough. Take a look. <laughs> no animals were harmed in the making of this film. <laughs> have you ever been that? Been so motivated? You've been driving, you've been getting it done, you have been focused, you are right on line and all of a sudden life happened and boom. Yes. If that hasn't happened to you, you better drop on your knees right now. <laughs> because you are a rare bird indeed. However, Inspiration. Inspiration comes from a word that means influenced by God or gods. And it means to breathe. And when you have felt the breath of God, then nothing can stop you. So if your resolution is based on what you are designed and built to do, then I'm going to tell you, there is nothing that can stop you. There is no tree that after it knocks you down, you won't get back up and dust yourself off and say thank you very much. And you walk around and you keep going. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> now that dude's inspired, baby. <laughs> My name is Oe Osterkamp, which is a great Eastern North Carolina name, right? <laughs> Names are incredibly important. Names will fertilize that inspiration or it will starve your inspiration if you let it. With a name like Oe Osterkamp, I've had a very interesting life when it comes to being introduced. And when I had my own business, I actually had somebody call a salesperson who thought they were going to make a sale because they asked to speak to oily oyster crap. <laughs> Now, how many here think that person made the sale that day? <laughs> how many people think there are friends in my life who still to this day call me oily oyster crap? <laughs> yes, there are. And my guess is the way we have this love relationship in this room, there will be one or two of you who will join that group who will call me oily from this point forward. Names are incredibly important. I want to give you an example today of inspiration 
of a little girl named Peluche in Honduras. Peluche in Honduran Spanish means wild hair, kind of like those troll dolls we used to have when we were kids, remember? And that's her brother. I just wanted to show you that real quick. <laughs> this is what she handed back to me. Circles and lines. Here's a nine-year-old girl who cannot write her name. That was not acceptable to me. So I gave her, I, I went to her family, her mom and her dad, and I said, I would like to give her the money to be able to afford her books, her supplies, her uniform, and her shoes. Would that be okay? And everybody was happy, especially Cindy Maria, which is her name. I was writing a book at the time called Being a Sharefish in a Selfish World, and I added an additional chapter to it. And I wrote my story about meeting Cindy Maria and what had happened. And at the end of the chapter, I said, and instead, Cindy Maria is sitting at her desk with her tongue sticking out the side of her mouth. And instead of writing circles and lines, she is writing her name. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to see her the next year in 2009. ran down the dirt road of her village around the corner to her house. And this is what I found. <coughs> Parents nowhere to be seen. They had been gone for days. Cindy Maria was left. At this point, she was 10 years old. 10-year-old Cindy Maria was left to take care of her four younger brothers and sisters. Her mom and dad were gone. The day after we had left the year prior, her dad, who I learned, is a very nice man when he is sober, but that is not very often. And when he is not sober, he can be quite abusive. And he sold her school uniforms, her books, her supplies, and her shoes for alcohol. That, that was a tree I ran into. But I got up and I brushed myself off. And I walked around and I continued. So I tried again. The same thing happened. I'm like, okay. That day, Sharefish was born. 